that afternoon chat and use our official hashtag Afternoon Express. It's not just me and Jay Dizzle in the loft. Bon Bizzle is over at the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Bonnie Bully. Today is the second installment in our sustainability series, and we'll be chatting to a young man who's making a positive difference in the lives of the homeless population in South Africa. We're also joined by Dr. Cindy Fancel, a woman who's using the power of social media to reach out and make a difference in the medical field. I'm also joined by the beautiful Claire Winstanley. <laughs> We're rocking green. We're really going green yeah, today. We are. Yeah. Oh, it's a good one. I just noticed that. I know. And speaking <laughs> of going green, keep your phones handy so that you can enter our Go Green competition. So today we're making a, a Mexican classic and with a twist. speaking of green, green-listed fish tacos. So we're using a green-listed yes. fish. And like you say, something different on a fish taco, which is my favorite. Love them. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. And is it soft tacos or? Soft. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I find it hard to eat those crunchy yeah, ones. I never know what to do with yeah, them. Yeah, they go all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Let's join B on the couch with our first guest. Thank you so much, B. Like she said, please keep those phones handy. If you have any questions for any one of our guests, you know exactly where to find us. We are live. 8 is the number you can dial. And make sure you talk to us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. We do love hearing from you. But right now, he is considered one of the pioneers of black comedy right here in South Africa. Born in Pretoria, he ventured into the industry while studying drama at the University of Cape Town. After leaving school, he's best known for writing, producing, and starring in the hit comedy series, Pure Monati show and his comedy has seen him perform all over the world. Joining me on the couch is the hilarious Kaki Solidika making faces while I introduce him on Afternoon Express. How are you? I'm great. Good. How are you? How are you? Thanks I'm for good. having me. Yeah. You look good. Thank nice you. Nice shoes. I've been eating. So, yeah. Yeah, we have lots of food here. So, what do we do? We just feed people. Not my house. Not here. Oh, not here. Well, leading up to this, I've Okay, been, thanks so. for that. Yeah, right. So but you've been described as a pioneer of black comedy. How do you take that title? Do you appreciate this is it? It's weird. It's just weird. It? Yeah. Because I was at Joe Mafela's like roasting last week. Yeah. And uh, he's more of a pioneer of black comedy. Uh -huh. No, I, I don't know. I like to call myself a pioneer of all comedy. Um, no, yeah. So, <laughs> um, uh, I, I guess it's cool. It's flattering, even yeah. though I'm still like not even 40 yet. Uh, yeah. That they call me a pioneer of things. Thank you, people who did that. I don't know who came up with this pioneer thing, but I see it everywhere. That's it's a bit annoying, but it's fine. All right, we won't use it again. Don't Talking about Joma Fella, right, and mm. black comedy in general. I mean, you in your early days at the University of Cape Town, you did comedy. So, how was the reaction and uh, the expectations from black comedians back then? There were no black comedians. <laughs> um, uh, hence the whole thing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 at UCT, I guess it was, I was a drama student with David Carl. And uh, that's a pioneer right there. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so, we, you know, we just did stand up and there was no stand up. So people kind of thought this is interesting, you know, mm. this is a weird thing that, that we were doing. And yeah, so there was no, there were other people who kind of decided, people of all races who decided they wanted to do the same thing. But I mean, let's talk about the Pure Manati show and when you created the show. And I mean, I think everybody sees it as uh, the, the show that sparked sort of modern comedy in the modern comedy scene. How did you come up? with the idea of the Pure Monati show. S Taking into consideration, you said back then there weren't a lot of black comedians. Yeah, well, I, I'd seen all these shows. I was sitting on the toilet. No, I'd seen <laughs> these shows. I'd seen these shows on, uh, you know, like in Living Color, the, uh -huh. the Pythons and all of that type of stuff. And I thought, yeah, wh wouldn't it be cool to get all these guys? Because, you know, in the comedy clubs, it was like very few comics. Myself, Riyad Musa, David Carr, Conrad Koch. Um, uh, and I thought it's so funny that people laugh at all these things that they say in these comedy clubs. Wouldn't it be cool if we made sort of sketches like little vignettes and put them on TV and kind of reflected South Africa in that way? And it was a hit. So it was like 2003, 2004, and yeah, yeah and people seemed to take to it. And a lot of people, a lot of comedians started their, obviously, their careers on the Pure Monati Show. How did you get all those talents together? I mean, you mentioned quite a few names. I called them. Um, I, was, I, I understand, but um, I, I mean, you have to convince Vince, then what did you say? I mean, this is a brand new idea. No one has heard of it. Uh Oh, it was actually quite interesting because a lot of them had jobs. Like Joey Razdeen was working at Alexander Forbes. Yeah. Tsepo Mokhale was at Investec. They all had jobs. And, and uh, I said, cool, this is, you can quit your, your boring job and come and do this cool job that you really want to do. And then they decided to do that. And then uh, we didn't get paid for two months. And some of them had kids and all of that. And it was all on me. And I was 23, 22, 
didn't know <laughs> I didn't know what to do. You know when you like have actual yeah. grown people looking for money to feed their children. Yeah. It was your fault that they, they don't have money. So so yeah, but after that two months they never looked back. All of us never looked back. So Absolutely. That was great. So and, and with that said, did you think that comedy would be this big in this country? That you know, you could be a, a comedian, that's it. Riyad Musa can be a doctor and also a comedian. David Gao can just run on comedy and also, you know, Trevor Noah. Yeah, I thought so. So I, th I think at the time I thought, yeah, that's I mean, because we had no option, right? Yeah. The, I knew that that's the only thing that I wanted to do. So there was no other option. I wasn't like, okay, let's try this thing, but on the side I'll be an insurance salesman. So it had to work. So so yeah, we, we did that. And I mean, and then you you fast forward to 2009. The Emmy Awards call you. They're like, we want you to judge. What exactly were you judging, and what was your role in the Emmy oh, that Awards? It was boring. Actually, it was even, boring. I don't Tell even me know why how was it boring? Were, I would not die thing. to be you. It's not a thing. It's not a thing it's to a judge thing. the Emmy. No, no, you know what's the thing? It's been nominated for an Emmy, yeah. which is which is cut to last year and the year before, which is you know with uh, Louisa Gola. Yeah, but but that one was actually I was like, you watching shows from India and like South Korea. I don't know what they were saying. You just sit there and. It's great, it's an honor, but it's boring as hell. So How long does it take? Why is it boring? The whole day. Like, oh my goodness, sitting there watching things yeah, you're yeah, not even yeah. interested in. You're locked up in a room and you're kind of watching. The only perk is that you get to, like, be, they take you to New York and you kind of go to the Emmy Awards and all of that. But other than that, I wouldn't recommend it, eh? It's, it's really boring. Really boring. Yeah, well, look, I mean, it's an honor. It's an honor. Honors, hey, honors but can also be boring, which is wonderful. Yeah, I mean, what's better is, is what to be is. nominated for an, an Emmy. That's and how cool. was that, being that nominated, cool. being on a um, you know the red carpet and being on the other side you were a judge and now you're on there for something you produce you created that we watch as yeah. South Africans that was cool that was nice yeah it was really cool the meeting that lady from um, uh um, Ed Orange is the New Black. What's her name? Laverne Cox. Laverne Cox. That was She's great. Fabulous. She's beautiful. Really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah I, was, I found myself kind of very conflicted. It was cool. And because the Pio so. Minati show was such a success, and we're at 2015, I think the year where comedians really are ruling the world in South Africa, are you going to create another show like that? You have, you know, plans and created something, a platform, a reality yeah, show yeah. for comedians yeah, yeah, moving yeah. forward? There's a show that we're doing. It's actually on SABC starting at the, towards the end of the year with myself, Hugh Masakela, it's like the band of the house mm -hmm. um uh, he's very funny and on all pretty much all the new school comedians jason goliath awesome. loiso mading all of these guys it's very cool it's called the bantu hour uh -huh. quite uh, quite the people are kind of not really sure if that's a cool name but i think you know we need to embrace it. Bantu means people, by the way. It doesn't mean like black people or whatever. It just means people. So we're making a show for, for people, South African people, people of all, of all sorts. And it's called that. The so Bantu what kind of Hour. format show is it? Is it a, like a studio audience? It's is like, it a stand-up comedy? Studio, it's got a studio audience. Mm -hmm. It's got a thing that resembles stand-up comedy. It's got a lot of sketches. It's really kind of um, ambitious and big. And um, uh, I, I think we're actually going to like do, we shot a very ambitious pilot as well. That's probably going to come out online. In October, so you'll see. You'll see. I'll come here and, and plug I it, would love and to hopefully, you guys help me plug it as well. It's called the Bantu Hour, though. So That's wait for fantastic. that. And Bantu means people. Yeah, just to clear um, that. Yeah, quickly. it doesn't mean yeah. It's, All yeah. right. So we're so, claiming the word. So yeah. for a young comedian that is watching you right now and seeing everything that you have created and everything that you have done, do you think it's the perfect time to get into comedy? It's healthy. Would you say to somebody, do it? And what steps no, should they take? I would say the but the the bus, you know, the horse has bolted, as they yeah, say. Yeah, no, the train has for, left. Forget about it, focus on other things because <laughs> it was better when I started because there were no comics. So like, look at me now. But now you're coming in, it's like heavy. It's, what do you want? You're gonna compete with Will everybody. You? It's uh, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be easy, you, but you, I'm not, look, I don't wanna discourage you, but I am saying that, you know, you were better off like four <laughs> years ago studying this whole thing. Now it's just too much. Now it's like, yeah, study it's accounting. It's it's yeah. lohi, so you have no chance. Things of that. You, you have a chance, but it's harder. It's right. When I was studying, I didn't even have to be funny. I just I had to say you. I'm a comedian. They were like, okay, what is that? You, you, you're in, you're All in. Right. But now the room is locked. Uh, the room is locked. We want you to respond to what Kakhiso said right now at Afternoon Chat on Twitter. Use our official hashtag Afternoon Experience. He's still going to be in the loft if you have any questions for him, so make sure that you, you know, pull them through. But I remind you to go out and get your 50 Rand off Essays number 1 foundation just by purchasing Revlon Calistay Foundation now in July at any leading retail and pharmacy stores nationwide. Remember to take a selfie with the product and you and your plus one, be it your bestie or your lover, could win a 24 hours experience in my life. Hanging out here on set with the likes of Cajiso and Genie and Bombizzle, enjoying the city life by dining at one of my favorite restaurants, staying in my favorite hotel and also turning 
love on, whether you're in love or just looking for love. So take a pic of you and your Rib Blonde Color Safe Foundation and tweet at Afternoon Chat. Use our official hashtag Foundation Fridays and love is on. This amazing prize is valued at 25,000 rands and includes an all expenses paid trip to Cape Town for two, dinner at an A-list restaurant, plus a 10,000 rand shopping spree. So get tweeting now, all right? And uh, make sure that everybody around you likes them and you know, you might might just win. Don't forget those hashtags, very important, Foundation Fridays and love is on. But after the break, Bonnie makes those fresh fish tacos and we chat to inspirational ice swimmer, Ryan Strimmert, about his upcoming record attempt at swimming the Northern Channel between Scotland and Ireland. Imagine that. You're on SCBC3, don't move. Oh. Welcome back to Afternoon Express Live on 3. We're about to start our spicy fish tacos. And if you're cooking along with us at home, visit our website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. What's the first step, Claire? So spicy indeed. We're going to start over here with the pickle that we made for our papaya and carrot. Okay. This is the, the twist carrot. part, mm -hmm. is the pickle. So what we've done is we've just taken some of the white wine vinegar, some sugar and some chili, mm -hmm. and we've just melted the sugar really and heated up that vinegar just to create the pickling liquid oh, right. for the right. carrots and the pie. So I'm going to give that to you over so there. So it obviously has a bit of a sweet and sour taste. Sweet, sour sugar. and a whole lot of spiciness. Wow, wow. <laughs> so that you're going to pour over onto the carrot the which carrots. is just thinly ribboned with a peeler. Ribboned, Ribboned yeah. indeed. And then goes, the, so this is a bit strange for people maybe, the papaya, but it is in season at the moment. It's so sweet, it's so delicious. So I thought why not pair it with the carrot and make a pickle with a twist. Right, and you've also ribboned the papaya. Yes, so thinly, just thinly How sliced How easy is that though? Because it's quite slippery. It's fun. It's, it's fun. challenging. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so while you do that, you can just mix those two up over there into that green bowl. Oh, mix We've got together. our, so what we spoke about earlier, sassy green listed hake yes. over here, which we're just going to juice up with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. That's really just going to stop it from sticking in the pan and it's going to kind of hold all of our spices together. Mm -hmm. Which, speaking of spices, what have this, we got there? This comes the, the Mexican spiciness to it. So we've got our smoked paprika, lots and lots and lots of it. Love that. Uh -huh. Then some cumin some cayenne pepper, some cayenne onion, pepper. Ooh, I'm making mm. mess. onion powder, garlic powder. Garlic powder? Yes. Oh, okay. And then some salt and pepper, not all and of it. And you said onion powder as well. Yes. And then that just becomes a really a, a marinade or a paste. So you want to you want to marinate this for a little bit of time, but just because we're going to you know, get eating and assembling and is, now. Is any firm white fish suitable? Absolutely. Well, actually, you can use any sassy green listed fish. I would go for, you can even use a... Um, a rainbow trout would be great as well. Ah, I was about um, but today, you know, I kind of felt like a whitefish, so rainfall yeah. hake. Okay. Um, so that's that, and then it just goes into our hot pan. Right. So like I said, if you can, uh, marinate it for a little bit of time. But we're just going to cook this up we're instantly. Cook it up and now. it really cooks so fast. I see you've got no oil in that pan. Yeah, so like I said, I oiled the fish. Because if you oil the pan, it's just going to cause a huge smoky mess, which I know it's doing now, but it would be ten times it worse. It would be worse. Um, and then pop this in here. You don't really want to overcrowd the pan. Mm -hmm. So let's just get that going. And then we can start assembling. Assembling the taco. How's the pickle looking over there? I think it's looking amazing. I'm trying to be quite gentle with it so that I don't mash the papaya. Yeah, this is the thing. So if you want, if you think of like a Thai green um, papaya, yeah. that, that, like I said, is green. So it, it's a lot more robust and holds its shape. Um, than an orange one, but you know, like I said, these ones are in season at the moment, so we're going for papaya. Mayami. It's tasty. I'm resisting okay, so every urge to like just gulp a spoonful of this. To gulp why? A spoonful of this. Ooh, Ooh go for it. Taste it. It looks so yummy. Taste, well, that's a good point, is actually taste it as you go. So maybe a little bit of seasoning is needed. <laughs> what do you think? Mm, it's perfect. No? No. No salt, no Nothing pepper? Nothing else. Okay. Spot I trust on. you. Okay, we just turn those, mm. let's assemble. Okay. So what we've got here is, oh, there's a little knife for us, is a guacamole, which we've just used creme fraiche and avo and a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to pop that onto our taco, which we've just literally put into a dry pan. Okay. And that's going to give it that like nice burned little edges. Mm -hmm. And then goes a little bit of the papaya. You can pop that on there. Right. Just down the middle, right? Just in the middle. And then we can get some of our fish going. 
It really is a I mean, very could quick, you use simple way to cut tacos if you if you. Prefer. Yeah, you can, but you probably want to. They're so use, messy. Yeah, and this is a quite a dry fish taco. There isn't a whole lot of sauce besides the avocado. Mm -hmm. And with a dry taco, you're probably going to need something a little bit more saucy in terms yeah. of your protein. So yeah. you know that's why like a mincy kind of. Um, protein yes. goes well in a, yeah. in a dry taco. And you're going to need to be home in your pajamas where you're not trying to impress anyone. Yeah, that's the thing with the, yeah. the, the hard shells. As you eat, it all kind of squelches yeah, out the other side. Just, yeah. And kind of maybe sometimes never happens to me, ends up all over <laughs> your shirt. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, Anything so else I need to add, um, add to no, this? No, that's kind of it. Next goes the fish. So very simple, very quick. Okay. It's kind of rushing here, so it's breaking up a little bit. Okay. But you're just looking for... Um, it to be just done. You really don't have to overcook fish. Okay. It's just, just cooked, just starting to flake off nicely. Okay. And into Do you need me to put some coriander on the top? Yes, lots and lots of coriander. Lots. Yes. Okay. Do you like coriander? I love coriander. And some, some lime. Have, Do we squeeze people lime? Have mixed on the top? reviews on it. Some, some say it tastes. Um, actually, my mom thinks it tastes like stink bug. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> what a stink wow. bug would taste like. <laughs> Not my mom's favorite. <laughs> and don't forget to go to our website if you want the full recipe, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. And this chili and this lime? Yeah, oh, so you're just, just squeezing a whole lot on there. I mean, obviously, you're going to do this as you serve. Right. But, you know, we're going to eat this and one you, now. And, and you'll use the chili, chili at your own discretion, of course. Exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of it. Okay, and you awesome. Can just keep assembling those. There's our taco. It looks absolutely amazing. Let's join Jeannie on the couch with our fascinating guest. Thank you, Bonnie. And I love fish tacos. But speaking about fish, I have a human fish with me right here. Most of us won't even dip our toes in the water when it's cloudy outside. But this man chooses, as a hobby nonetheless, to swim in ice water in the planet's most inhospitable places. His adventures are often world first, setting new benchmarks for human achievement and often in death-defying circumstances. Joining us now, ice swimmer and motivational speaker, Ryan Stramrud. Welcome. Thank you. What an intro. You have done so some of the most incredible swims. You've crossed the English Channel, then you swam the Strait of Gibraltar from Europe to uh, Africa. Africa. Then you did the Arctic Circle Ice Mile, then the Correct. Antarctica Ice Mile, <laughs> and then South America. I mean, <coughs> are there any waters that you haven't yet crossed? Oh, there are plenty. You know, what we, we do spend a lot of time on Google Earth looking for little passages of water that, that are cold and horrible and that nobody swam across, and, and we make an attempt. Is that legitimately how you do it? Like you uh, try and find the places that nobody's ever been? That is legitimately how we do it sometimes. It's not always like that, but yes. Now, I, th I think the question is, why? This is terrifying. Uh, it, it is. It's a long journey. You know, we didn't wake up one day and decide to do that, but uh, a group of mates and myself have been testing ourselves in increasingly cold conditions, uh, and the more people you meet around the world, the more doors open and the more crazy things jump into your mind, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just been an awesome journey. So I do it because I take so much out of it. It yeah. pushes me personally. The cold is something that I don't actually enjoy, um, but it, it really gets inside me and it makes me negative and it makes me doubt myself. Yeah. And it's a fantastic mental journey to try and overcome that and succeed uh, in a swim and a distance too. I mean, I cannot <coughs> even walk around, you know, the, the, South Africa in winter because mm. I find it so freezing cold. How on earth, I mean, wh what is the difference between our bodies? Do, uh, does your thermostat work differently to mine or how are you able to withstand such cold temperatures? Um, nothing different about me than anybody else. I don't have any special abilities to raise my inner core temperature. Um, and I don't like the cold just as badly as you don't like the cold. A lot of yeah. people always go, hey, it's freezing outside, Ryan. You must be loving it. I hate it. Um, but we have conditioned ourselves. We train in the cold. And the cold is, as I said earlier, a very mental thing. So you can condition yourself to prolong uh, your performance and, and performing physically in the cold. Uh, but it's a tricky process, and it's very hard, and it's, it's hugely challenging. So, so I do it for the challenge, really. Do you <coughs> get to wear a wetsuit or, or almost always a speedo? No, it's always always a speedo, goggles and a cap, no greasing, very, very purist. Okay, so almost always a speedo, unless you're swimming from Russia to the USA and then you went naked. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, did you I, lose your speedo? No, I heard, <laughs> I, I heard that intro. Um, it was, certainly wasn't naked. Ah, um, okay. But we term, the, yeah, the, the yeah. difference, you term, you term <laughs> wetsuit is wetsuit and naked is speedo generally. Oh, okay, yeah, so, so that's the I wasn't really speedo. naked. <laughs> and then you were arrested. So the Russians did not like you on speed. No. <laughs> yeah, look, that, that's a bit dr dramatic. There was a huge fear of being uh, arrested. It's quite a long story, but I tried to swim. There are two little islands smack in the middle of the Bering Strait. 
um, called the Diomede Islands. One's in Russian water, and then you get the international border, and the other's in America. They're four kilometers apart. And I wanted to be the first guy in the world to swim across that solo. Yeah. Um, and I could not get permission from the Russians to land on the Russian island. Uh, it's a military base, and when I set my challenge, it was right at the time that Russia just invaded the Ukraine. Political tensions were, were terrible, so they weren't that happy about someone swimming across the border and climbing out on a speedo. Um, <laughs> but I went to do it anyway, and uh, was unfortunately snookered by the politics, so I couldn't touch the Russian islander. Uh, um, for fear of being arrested because it's extremely cold water. When I, if I was arrested and hauled out the water, I need medical attention uh, immediately, and I didn't think the Russians would provide that. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it, that was. It was oh, I could really write a book about that trip. Uh, wish we had more time. Incredible. <coughs> Why do you need medical attention the minute you get out of the water? Do, do, is it a time? Uh, do you need time mm. to readjust almost or acclimatize? Uh, correct. It's the, the cold is dangerous, um, and swimming in water, the cold in water, has a 25 times quicker effect. It sucks the life out of you or the warmth out of the human body 25 times quicker as if you if you were standing in the air. Um, so there's a thing called the afterdrop. When you jump into freezing cold water, uh, the blood rushes from your extremities, not just toes and fingers, but from your, your legs and your thighs and your arms, all into your central core to keep your vital organs uh, going, yeah. keep them protected. Yeah. Um, and that's a great process. We kind of learn and study and, and practice to, to experience that and then perform physically uh, under it. However, when you get out the water, it's the most dangerous time. It's called the afterdrop. Mm. All that now warm blood that's left uh, that's sitting inside your core, that starts releasing and going back to your extremities, which are now absolutely frigid. So that warm blood f cools down really quickly, and then it does a U-turn and circulates back to your core. So your core temperature keeps dropping after the swim, and that's where you really do need medical assistance to at least watch you and monitor you. Because you get out the water, but what we do generally, we know we are going to be hypothermic. It's not a matter of we don't want to be hypothermic. We know we're gonna go quite deep into it. Yeah. It's just finding that limit and pushing those boundaries slightly in, in the most responsible way that we can. It's fascinating <coughs> how much the human body can actually endure. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. And that's the wow. journey we're on. And it's the human mind even more so than the, yeah. than the body. The body is, you know, you can do the training, you can condition the body, but the mind overrules the body so quickly. Yeah. And that's what it's really about for us. Would it take <coughs> me through one experience or time that, that you actually really realized that, you know, that mm. how, how much stronger your mind is than the body and how powerful the body is as well? I'll mention two. The first one for me was my English Channel crossing when I went from, so from uh, Dover in the UK across to, to France. The water is not extremely cold, it's just cold, like 16 degrees, kind of Clifton on an average uh, day. Um, and that was a 13 hour swim for me. So in a, being in a, a Speedo costume for 13 hours, um, somewhere in the middle you're gonna run the tank empty yeah. um, and you're gonna have to switch from body, from your physical training over to your mental training. It's a given that at some stage you're gonna wanna get out and you're gonna think you've hit the wall, that you can't go on, the tank yeah. is empty, you can't carbo load enough, um, and you have to change that gear. And I had a real epiphany out there in, in the English Channel, um, and I kind of realized for the first time that I just pushed past my own impossible. I got to a point in the channel that I thought was impossible, I carried on, I succeeded. Um, and the second time was, was recently, last year in March, I swam um, an official ice mile under the International Ice Swim Association rules um, uh, in Antarctica with Ron Balkai, Kyron Palfram, and Tox Viviers, and, and Andrew Chin, Gavin Pike, some really tough uh, teammates. We, we went to try and set a, a record and a world first over there. And we had trained in waters um, about two degrees, three degrees, mostly in, in between Robben Island and Bloberg. Yeah. But we go down to, to uh, the, the local fishery, INJ, down the way, and we get into a tub of ice, and we, we bring that, uh, the simulate that water right down. Um, when we got to Antarctica on the day that we swam, it was minus one. So the water was actually sub-zero, being salt water. It hadn't frozen. Oh. Um, and we should not be able to perform for very long in that. And it took me 32 minutes to complete my mile distance. So. You are incredible. <laughs> There's so much more no. I want to find out from you. So we're going to keep chatting. But for now, we wish Ryan the best for his upcoming record attempt for the 24th to the 29th of July. And uh, you're going to be going no. from Ireland to Scotland, right? And back in a relay. Oh, yeah. Two-way North Irish Channel crossing attempt. After the break, we speak with Oliver Brain, the next installment of our Go Green Sustainability Series. And we're joined by the inspirational Dr. Cindy Fonsale. Be right back. South Africa, are you with us? Welcome back.
back. You're still watching Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. We are live, so call us and tweet us right now. But now is the second installment of our Go Green Sustainability Series. And remember to listen very carefully and enter our Go Green SMS competition. We're very excited to announce the winner of last week's 1,000 Rands Willie's gift card. Diane Austin for Aman Zindoti in KwaZulu Natal. If you're watching, congratulations, darling. You're the lucky winner of that amazing gift card. We'll reveal this week's question a little bit later. But joining us right now is an innovative and inspiring young man who upcycles advertising billboards into survival sleeping bags for homeless people. Oliver Brain, welcome to The Loft, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. First and foremost, let's start at the beginning. What inspired this particular project? For me, it was a passion project right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I was walking around my own neighborhood, and I really wasn't feeling connected with the, with the people that was living around me. And it wasn't just mm -hmm. the neighbors who lived right next door to me, but it was also the homeless people who, who also live in my own community. So I felt that I wanted to help them, that I didn't have an easy or, or transparent enough platform to do it from. Um, so I decided to create that platform mm -hmm. and I wanted to focus on one element and that was providing shelter for those who don't have it. So let's talk about Street Sleeper and what exactly is it and what do you do? So Street Sleeper we use innovation to tackle some of the problems facing homeless men and women. We upcycle PVC advertising billboards wow. into survival sleeping bags. Um, these bags don't only uh, provide shelter from, from the winter and the cold nights, but they also double as backpacks during the day. Oh, so you can, so you can put all your belongings in the mm -hmm. bottom um, and you can roll it up and carry all your stuff around and keep it and safe and keep it dry uh, while you're going about your daily, daily routine. Let's talk about the process from the billboard to you delivering it to you know, the, the, uh, the, the homeless people. Where does it start and how do you get hold of those billboards? So yeah, I mean the whole process of, of going from billboard to bag, the, the way that we're funded is we're community funded. So, okay. so we ask for people in any neighborhood or community around mm -hmm. South Africa to, to donate and it's 150 Rand for a bag and that goes towards the funding of making one of our survival sleeping okay. bags. Um, after that process we then get uh, advertising billboards. I mean these things are huge. They can be massive. Uh, yeah, you've seen them 150, <laughs> 150 square meters. They can weigh upwards of 100 kilograms each. Um, and we get them taken down off the buildings mm -hmm. when a campaign finishes. It comes to our production facility, and it's there that we work with homeless people. Okay. Um, and we train them up, uh, and, and they cut these billboards into different bag templates, and then they sew them into survival sleeping bags. Mm -hmm. And then it's at that point that we look to distribute them. How do you distribute them? Because, uh, you know, from, I mean, well, from me the factory, um, do you want to show us Let first? me show you one, yeah. It's so, massive. So this is this is what we're looking at here. Uh -huh. um, I'm gonna roll that up for us over now. So it's not a sleeping bag that you or I may know. Yeah. It's what we call a survival sleeping bag. So you get inside here. But if you look inside, you can see all the branding and yeah, things like that yeah. from the different billboards. Yeah. Um, and people get inside it. We make it long enough so that you can put your belongings safely in, in the it. bag okay. while you're sleeping, which is a problem that um, facing homeless people that I didn't realize when we started was that you could be sleeping at night and all your worldly possessions are just taken Take from you because you're trying to close your eyes for a few hours. So back to that question, then how do you distribute them and where do you know, how do you find the homeless people? I know some of them obviously are, you know, on the streets and all of that, but how yeah. do you decide who gets the street sleep? So we've, we've piloted so many different ways um, mm. of doing it. As I said in the beginning, it really was a passion project. It was just myself really going out to my own neighborhood okay. and, and I had existing relationships with homeless people and I would say to them, listen, here's okay. a product that, that's, that I've designed for you. It's been mm. funded by members of the public. Um, you know, would you find this useful? Um, and, and invariably, you know, they, they, they're keen to find out more. Um, but what I realized is what, that I was becoming the bottleneck. Mm. You know, I really want to create a sense of value for the people who receive the bags and, and lower some of these social barriers in our community through giving out the bags. But I realized that if I was the only person doing it, then we wouldn't get as many bags out yeah. fast enough. So now oh, what we do is we, you know, we, we you know, Facebook is, is, is our platform and we're really Fantastic. trying to engage with loads of people. All right. And um, we are trying to identify change makers in different communities throughout South Africa. So you it's do. really, if you, you know, you could get in touch with us and say, you know, Oliver or Street Sleeper, mm. we're, we're really keen to, to, know, get, to, involved. to get involved Absolutely. and to give some bags out in, in, in our local neyborhoods. And I'll say, 
This awesome. is how you do. Yeah, Fantastic. this is how you do. It, so. Well, you know, it is Nelson Mandela Day. We just celebrated 67, you know, Mendes and his birthday on Saturday. You are so inspiring, Oliver. Thank you so much for coming through and Fantastic. showing us that you can make a change, you know, in the in your community, in your little way. You can really change the world. If you want more information on this project, and of course, Oliver, you can go to afternoonexpress.co.today. But remember to enter our Go Green SMS competition and stand a chance to win that 1,000 Rand's Willys gift card. Here is the question. What does Street Sleeper upcycle to make sleeping bags? for the homeless is it a pvc advertising billboards is it b old newspapers or is it c crayons hey so mr keyword go green your name city and answer a b or c to double three seventy eight to stand a chance to win you'll also be entered into our door for the ultimate grand prize and you definitely don't want to miss out on this amazing competition take a look The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card every week. Plus, if you answer all 12 questions correctly, you'll be entered into our draw for the ultimate grand prize valued at more than half a million Rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev worth 300,000 Rand. Also, up to 250,000 Rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus, food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 Rand. And a 25,000 Rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So, go big, go green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. Today, First for Women Insurance is continuing the first South African Women's Series through Afternoon Express, where we celebrate, admire, and learn from a number of fantastic South African women. Today, we're going to chat to a medical practitioner with the difference, Dr. Cindy Fanzale. Through her prolific community engagement on Twitter and Facebook, through emails via her blog, Dr. Cindy provides ongoing support and healthcare education to those in desperate need of healthcare. She currently works as an HIV clinician clinician, is that right, at the Zuzimpilo Clinic in the Johannesburg CBD. In her spare time, she also writes for magazines, online health journals, and hosts a weekly radio show. On behalf of First for Women Insurance, we welcome you, Doctor. Thank you. It's so awesome to finally meet you, because I follow you on Twitter, and you've become like the family doctor, because mm. you share so much of your life as well. You, I love those stories you tell usually on a Sunday morning and they're all bulleted. <laughs> <laughs> numbered, numbered Twitter, yeah. Yes, and you share stories about your family, mm. but most of all, you're making such a positive impact. How did this come about? Because the, you know, the internet is used for a myriad of reasons and you found a very positive way to utilize it. Well, it actually started in 2011. Um, I joined Twitter, and then a friend of mine, Unyakalo, introduced me to um, QMe, which is a blog. And um, I, I needed something to do which expressed who I was. And at the time, I mean, HIV was a lot of what I was doing. And so it initially began with me answering anonymous questions about HIV. But I think four years down the line, it has morphed into me answering a lot more than that. I think I answer a lot of health questions as well. It's stuff such as depression. I write a lot about depression. I write a lot about um, just, like just sex in general. And yeah, just giving general advice. Awesome. And how does it actually work? Does a person send you a, a DM or do they tweet you live? And how does the whole confidentiality well, thing work? Okay, well, confidentiality is very important. I think that's yeah. the one thing that, I mean, when people first start messaging me, the first thing they want to know, am I a real doctor? Yes. And is this stuff going to be confidential? So obviously I'm bound by the earth. There's no ways I'm going to share your details with anyone else. I might share a story online, but I'll never identify the person. You yes. know, I might share a story to illustrate something. Yes. But, um, it, you know, people DM me, people can write to me on the blog people can email me and that's how it all begins and obviously if you need something more urgent like if you need to really see a doctor then I'll refer you to a doctor but I can't diagnose online I can say to you well it might be this and and I think you must go and do this so mm -hmm. I'm actually I'm helping people make the most out of their medical consults because you know if you go to your doctor there's not much time so in that 15 minutes that you have or less yes. you must make the most of it I think I see myself as the person that, that gives you the words to say to yeah. get the most out of your doctor. You're the bridge in, yeah. in many ways. Well, I suppose, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's such a powerful platform. Why do you think the South African health system is not utilizing that more? 
I really don't know, Bonnie. I think each, each time I'm invited to an interview like this, each time I have to tell my story again, I keep wondering, why aren't more people doing it? So maybe it's because it doesn't pay, because I don't get paid for any of this. Wow. Or maybe, maybe it's my personality. Maybe it just fits that I enjoy being on my phone 24-7, because that's another thing as well. You tweet I'm a always lot. on my phone. <laughs> So, it, you know, so that's, that's the downside of it. That I'm yes. always on my phone. Mm -hmm. So they, I have to make a conscious decision that, okay, look, just four hours of sleep and then I'll wake up and continue. Because the questions don't stop. People are always writing. I mean, recently yes. I tweeted about how we should wash our, our, our vaginas with water. Uh -huh. And I got emails from as far as um, California. This young girl wrote to me and said to me, listen, I was Googling bacterial with water vaginosis. As opposed to, as opposed to those, those um, feminine hygiene products right. that are all over the show now that have uh -huh. really like hit the market. Yeah. And so she wrote me and she said to me, I saw you, I, I Googled, I saw your tweets, I need help. So I thought to myself, I'll refer her to a doctor in Johannesburg. I said, oh, where do you live? And she said, no, I'm in California. I'm like, oh, okay, well, wow. please go back to your doctor and ask for, the, you know, ask for this medication and mm -hmm. so on. So it's really, it's reaching people, w it's bigger than what I thought it was yeah. they're ever going to be, you know, yeah. so it's making a difference. And for anyone watching right now who's saying, this is amazing, I have a few questions for you. What is your Twitter handle? Okay, so my professional Twitter handle is at DocSindi, D-O-C-S-I-N-D-I. -I. That's where I really I want to answer a medical questions and that's when I'll give out. You know, mm -hmm. the other one is just like me and my family and a lot of other stupid stuff. I so know. I prefer people to use my at Like Doc hashtag Cindy. chest pains. <laughs> I saw that last night. No, well, I, I nearly tweeted a chest pain and I was like, um. <laughs> no, I was on standby for any heart attacks <laughs> last night. That's yeah. awesome. You're so inspiring, Doctor. Thank you. Yeah. So what's what's in store for the future? What more would you like to see happen in the healthcare system and the communities? Well, I think we need to move towards a patient-centric program. I think for too long it's been us telling people, telling patients how things should be done. We need to just take a step back and just ask ourselves, what do patients want? When a patient comes to a doctor, what do you want? Do you want, for me, I want you to go home and not come back and see me again. So if I give you antibiotics, Aww. I want to make sure you finish taking them and you, and you get better so I don't see you again. But at the moment, we have people coming back and coming back. So th there's a gap somewhere. Yes. Somewhere there's, no, there's, a, there's like not enough communication yeah. to people on how they should take the medication, what they should be doing to stay healthy. So awesome. I want to see a program where I see you once and I don't see you again. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much for sharing. You're thank not going you. away. We'll be uh, feeding you in a bit. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Cindy, we salute you and so does First for Women. First for Women's Women celebrates and empowers South African women through its insurance products and services. For a quote on a car, home, business or life insurance, call First for Women on 0861 or SMS FIRST to 49267 and they'll call you right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express Live on 3. Sam, welcome to our beautiful kitchen. Thank you. It's so lovely to be here. Awesome. You're making us some lovely cake. Mm -hmm. What else? I'm making a granadilla cake. It's a very easy cake and something just to whip up for a quick tea time treat. Oof. Whip up. Yeah, I love how like you say that. that because you make it sound so easy. And <laughs> it is very, not. very easy. Okay, show us how easy it okay. is. <laughs> so basically what we're doing here is we're going to cream our butter mm -hmm. um, in a mixer. We add our caster sugar. Okay. Into the mix, and you just let that cream for a little bit. I love this thing. It's this magic. is beautiful. One has to have a stand mixer. One doesn't want to be doing this on one's own. Sure. Um, the best, the, mo the most important part is you can mix this quite a lot at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, then what we do when the, the, it's nice and creamy, we're going to add our eggs. Normally we'd add them one at a time, but we, here we're just going to add all three. Okay. And just ensure that everything is incorporated right. into the mix. Once that is done, we we need to add the granadilla curd. And granadilla for, curd. Yeah. Does that come in like a, a, a tin? No, or? you can make it yourself. There's you actually a recipe um, on that's going to be going on the website with okay. the with the din. Um, extremely easy. You can also use a lemon curd or any other form mm -hmm. of citrus curd. Mm -hmm. So we add that to the mix. Then we add a full fat yogurt. Okay. To plain mix. yogurt. Uh, it's a plain yogurt, but it's a Greek style full fat yogurt into the mixer. Okay. And then once that that's all incorporated, we take self raising flour. Self raising. And we pop it in. And I see our pan's ready here. Yeah. Whoops. Made a little bit of a mess there. Um, and what you do is you take that out, scrape down the bowl, and, and pop it in your, your Pop it mixer. into the pan. Okay. Yes. Now, now, we already have one made over here. Yay. So we can have a look at how we're going to finish this cake off. Um, see how it came out all very beautifully. It's so, so beautiful. So simple. Um, and what, to make the, the, the topping, we're going to add some, take half a cup of icing sugar. Okay. And 
the remainder of the granadilla curd. Okay, I love salati icing sugar. Yeah, it, it it's makes magnificent. Life so easy. So we pop the granadilla curd yeah, into the mix. And then we More just mix curd. that. Okay. Yeah, so it's basically all around the curd. Mm -hmm, it's very mm -hmm. intense flavor. Um, it's kind of taken the best of the fruit. And we just add a little bit of water to make it a little bit more runny. You kind of want it to drip down the cake. Oh, wow, okay. So we you just mix that together. Okay. Not too thick. It's not like a buttercream icing. Wonderful. Do you want me to do something with the lemon in the meantime? Are we that, that, some that needed to go into the mix. So that needed to I go into the mix. erroneously <laughs> left that out. <laughs> Thank God that's on our website. <laughs> yeah. So once you've got your, your nice icing and everything's nice mm -hmm. and smooth, um, you need to pop that on top of the cake. Okay, wonderful. Just get that all over. And you just pour it over. And we can just pour it over. Yeah. It'll sort of harden a little and set a little bit. It but might. it's quite nice to get a little bit of a runny dripping effect. Right. And we can serve it with a bit of, is this cream? That is whipped cream. Whipped cream. And what's nice is you can either serve it with just plain whipped cream or alternatively you can fold some of more curd into the cream just to sweeten it a little ah, bit. Ah. Or just a little bit of icing sugar. Wow. And there you is, have it. This is a serious cheat afternoon. Here we go. That's the cake. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. There okay. you have it. Hope yours turns out just as beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bonnie. It looks really, really good. Remember, you can get all the recipes and methods on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. We're still chilling with our guests, Ryan and Gajiso. If you have any questions for them, call us right now. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat and uh, use our official hashtag, Afternoon Express. So welcome, guys, again. <laughs> I wanted to ask, what age were you when you both decided? Because, I mean, today, obviously, discussing inspirational people. Mm. But, I mean, how old are you when you actually realize, if I commit to this, I can actually achieve? Uh, for, for me, not that long ago, actually. Uh, wow. for only 15 years. So in the year 2000, um, I started swimming, got off the couch for the first time just to, to get fit and uh, adopt a slightly more healthy lifestyle. And I joined a little swimming group, and eventually someone says, why don't you try and swim from Robben Island to Bloberg? And I remember thinking, that's just absolutely insane. Who does that? That's the super elite. Set a goal eventually and succeeded, and it started me on, on a journey. And I realized, hang on, I'm, I'm capable of a little bit more. Were you particularly a good swimmer before that? No, not at all. I've always loved swimming in the water, but I've never really swum. So wow. the year 2000 was the first time I've really joined a swimming squad, besides junior school and, and uh, preschool. Uh, swimming, so I, you know, I wouldn't drown if I jumped in, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> proper swimming, the year 2000. All right. Wow. That's incredible, Ryan. But we yes. have actually a caller on the line. Is it uh, Svaya? How are you? Hello. Um, I would like to ask Ryan a question. Yes. Um, how long does he train for? How many hours at a time? All right, lovely question. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you for your call, Ryan. Thanks, Thanks. Ryan. Yeah, it, it varies. I do a lot of, of uh, my training uh, in, in, a, in a swimming pool, and then I'll probably do about an hour and a half at a time, usually a 4K to a 5, to maybe 6-kilometer session. And mm -hmm. uh, then sometimes we do the cold water training where, where we go down to Clifton and Camps Bay, or we do a Robben Island crossing, uh, which takes me an average of two hours. So I spend quite a lot of time in the cold adapting wow. to it. But generally, train six days a week. Um, and at least an hour a day, and, and we do some gym training with that as well. You know, I want to know as well, with Kajiso, in your, in your line of work, how long does it take to prepare and put together an entire show, like a stand-up comedy show, maybe an hour and a half? Do you start months ahead, or is it, yeah, you know, off the cuff as you get on stage? It's one, Yeah, it could be off the cuff, but mm -hmm. the most, most times it takes, like, yeah, it could take you a year even, really? depending. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, when Jerry Seinfeld did that, I'm saying this for the last time, that was after 10 or 14 years doing that same set. I mean, he believes yeah. in perfecting a set for, like, longer periods, but where somebody like Louis C.K. will do mm. it, like, over nine months. Myself, but can you do that here? Hand. What? You use the same set over, you know, different provinces? Um, and how long uh, can you run with the same set for? Oh, yeah. Look, South, South African audiences, they were like, you know, they'll say, ah, but we heard that thing last week. <laughs> um, uh, and like, just, I'm trying to perfect it. No, yeah. don't perfect it. Just come up with a better thing. So, 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 but before, Love I mean, it. before they used to be like, you know, they'd come to a comedy club and they'll go, whoa, whoa, whoa. But you guys, you're tricking us here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whereas now, they, they kind of go, yo, man, you didn't do that one about, oh, you know? So, so we're kind of maturing. But, uh, yeah, you, I think also there's a more 
places because before that you didn't have enough places to go and do the stuff so that you can actually grow your material uh, but now there's you can end up in Limpopo one Sunday to, you know yeah. you can be like wherever New York City you can come back and be in Harare yeah, next true. week you're in Switzerland you that's know true. so so it's it's kind of it's good Fantastic. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much, Kachizo. That's exactly what today's show is about. I mean, talking mm -hmm. about inspiring South Africans all around the world. Are you any more inspired to swim? Because I asked her no. to do a half marathon with me, and she looked no. at me and she went, I shan't. I'm inspired. Shan't, darling. <laughs> well, I, just want to ask, I would fall apart. Guy? My hair would be left. My eyelashes would be all over the place. <laughs> but we'll talk <laughs> about that, that after the break. You, Don't move. <laughs> you asked me to swim across the... the uh, that. The sweetness lingers longer with another delicious recipe brought to you by Salati. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SCBC3. Now the food looks incredible. A big, big thank you to Claire. That looks divine. And to well Bonnie. Done. A big thank and you to, to Bonnie. Bonnie. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. Can we tuck in? Well, okay. one thing that I can tell you, Ryan, is you can eat this because the fish is sassy approved. Sassy approved. Very important <laughs> to me. I listen Good. to you. I know. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we love love sassy fish. <laughs> so, Bonnie, you're closest to our guests. Awesome. You can give them the delicious tacos. Uh, I'm going to dig please. into this. <gasps> you better save me one of those. Now, speaking about sassy approved and amazing delicious fish, Remember to enter our, uh, enter our Go Green SMS competition and stand a chance to win that 1,000 Rand Woolies gift card. This week's question is, what does street sleeper upcycle to make sleeping bags for the homeless? All right, is it A, a PVC advertising billboards, B, old newspapers, or C, crayons? SMS the keyword, go green, your name, city, and answer A, B, or C to 33728 to stand a chance to win. You'll also be entered into our draw for the ultimate grand prize, and you definitely don't want to miss out on this amazing competition. I certainly hope you save me yeah. a fish taco. Yeah, yes. well, a big, big <laughs> thank you to our inspiring guests here today, to Dr. Cindy, of mm. course, to Gachisalidecha. Thank you very much for coming. Through. And thank of course, to Ryan. Much. Claire, thank, thank you. you for the delicious food. We're gonna eat and yeah, tuck I love in. How you went straight for the sweet stuff. I told you, boo boo. You know how I do. You know how <laughs> I do. Best of luck for your race. I hope you thank win. You. Thank you. We hope you win. Right. Yeah. And thank you for watching from myself, <laughs> Jeannie, and Bonnie. It's good evening and happy eating. Good night. Good night. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we celebrate Good Hope FM's 50th anniversary with some of the country's top radio personalities, and we follow the heartwarming journey of Pemba, a stray dog from Mozambique who was given a second chance at life in Johannesburg. Another Feel Good Production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote, call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.